Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission of Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at the brand new Keychron V5. Now this is a 96% or an 1800 as they're called. I picked the knob version, surprise. Today it just arrived. Now I've got to say something odd, I did place an order for it last week and then I want to say about two days later. It got canceled and it just got refunded. There was no email, no nothing. But I went back on the site and they still had the uh, solid color in stock. And I placed the order. I want to say I placed it on Wednesday and I received it today on Monday. So um, DHL, really quick. I mean, it is pricey, but I did get it quick. So I, I, I've got to say that. I know in the past I'm like, no, I'll just wait till it gets to Divinity Key or whoever, but it did get here fast. So anyway, this is my series. I've basically been covering all of the V series that have come out and V, I guess, stands for value. But these are some great kits. I, I'm expecting good things out of this. We'll see how it sounds. All right, after the foam protectant, we come to find the quick start guide, which gives us uh, the different options, whether you're in Mac and Windows mode, and it's gonna have some shortcuts predetermined just a quick start every keychron has this and if they're hot swappable they also have this orange card that just lets you remind you to make sure that the pins are straight um, and that you put it in straight uh, so that you don't mess up the sockets so um, I've got to say I I haven't personally heard of anybody yet popping these off there they seem to be very well soldered on so, I mean, obviously any board that has hot swap sockets has the possibility of, you know, getting damaged. So you need to be careful. But uh, thus far, I've, I haven't heard of any issues with this. So we've got the uh, USB-C to USB-C cable with the um, adapter in a bag. And as I always say, hey, Keychron, I mean, it wouldn't cost you that much to add a little tail and keep this on there. So... You know, people have the option and they're not going to lose it. They don't have to carry it separately. But we have a couple of extra case screws and we've got the Allen wrench that'll open her up as well as a switch puller. And I'm going to guess that's the uh, screwdriver for the plate screws. And then we have a metal keycap puller included as well. Let's go ahead and put this stuff back and get to the meat of it. So right off the bat, we see a lot of similarities uh, as the to the other V series. Uh, you can tell it's it's got the same design language. Uh, these are a little bit uh, less. They're not as thick as the Q series, but they do have adjustable feet for the different typing angles. Um, they do come pre-lubed, although sometimes they do a better job than this, just the, putting a glob on there. But these are screw and stabilizers and as you can see we've got south facing leds so and the knob on this one because i know on the tkl version uh the v3 v4 no v3 i i keep there's so many models anyway um i believe the knob is here and some people don't necessarily like it but being on the outside seems to be the more preferential if you do have a knob. Now this is, for all intents and purposes, a full-size keyboard. Um, obviously, you've got different spots for your navigation keys and you've got you know, a numpad. So it kind of solves the problem. I mean, I use a TKL with a numpad, um, with a knob on the numpad. So, I mean, it kind of, for me, is a pretty good, um, layout and it might be for a lot of people especially people that do a lot of data entry and programming because a, a, a numpad is is almost just it, you need one 
So having that ability in one board that is not quite as wide as a full size is, and I do not have a full size to compare to here, but I'd, I'd guess at least three to four inches, maybe. Um, maybe a little bit less, but as far as width goes. Uh, so, but you're gonna be able to get everything done. Now, of course, we've got a reset button right here because it does come with QMK and Bio out of the box, yay. Uh, especially for Linux users such as myself. And as I said, we've got two different feet for a total of three typing angles. Now, let's go ahead and open her up real quick. All right, so no surprise here, we're looking at a standard um, tray mount a design. We're not looking at gasket mounted. So that's what one of the primary differences besides the, uh, the ABS case, um, plastic case would be the fact that this is a, a, a tray mount keyboard, which the majority of keyboards for the years have been tray mount. Gasket mounts have only been around uh, for like the last five or six years. I believe. So anyway, we can see that it's well built. We've got the switch here for the Mac and the Windows mode. Uh, no da daughter board. The USB-C is directly connected to the PCB. And we have a nice, decent steel plate. And just to confirm. Yep, that's a steel plate. Now, I'm not really gonna go any further. There's, there's quite a number of screws here to get down below, but below I know that what we have is a nice thick uh, silicone pad as can be seen. And of course I don't have one handy. I usually try to keep them handy, but I don't have a lot of room in here. Um, there's a very nice thick silicone pad that's just molded uh, perfectly to the bottom and it's very thick and it's what gives a lot of that heft that this keyboard comes with I mean, it's not super heavy, but it definitely feels a lot heavier than than what you pay for um, In my opinion So anyway, let's go ahead and pop her back closed So for today, I'm going to actually be loading up some Akko uh, Starfish. Um, these, uh, these have been broken in. I have, if you've seen my videos, I recently put together a, a switch break-in machine, and these have been run for approximately 240,000 presses. Anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and load up these, um, these Akko Starfish, and then we'll find us keycap set so that we can do a stock sound test on this Keychron V5. So here it is loaded up with some Akko Starfish. Uh, for this test, I thought I'd use, uh, I believe this is Apollo. It is a clone set from, I believe, Leaking, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I believe it is double shot, yes. Before loading up with caps, I was Thinking, let's show off the RGB because obviously we're going to be blocking that. And just as you can come to expect from Keychron, you have some really nice, bright, um, some of the best RGB in the business. So uh, I know a lot of folk 
do, you know, I, I myself, I, don't get me wrong, I have plenty of boards without any LED or just a single, single color, but having RGB is always nice because it gives you a way to complement, um, you know, just add to the aesthetics, complement the particular keycap set, your mood, the festivities, festivities, a whole bunch of reasons. But one thing that I do want to mention because there are newcomers into into this is that south facing keyboards um, if you use regular top shine through they're not going to be really lit up uh, you have to get the front or side ones the ones that have the window or the clear part of it facing forward and those are the ones that are going to give you the shine through ability um, so if you really want top shine through then you're going to be needing to look for a north face north facing keyboard anyway so i just wanted to uh show the rgbs i'm sure i could go through the functions but i just wanted to just wanted to cover the rgb and just show how bright it is and how colorful anyway i just wanted to get that out of the way let's go ahead and load up with some keys Let's get technical. So this is the Keychron V5, which is a 96% or a compact 1800 layout. It starts at $69 for the bare bone edition, $79 for the bare bone with the knob. It is a tray mounted keyboard that comes with both case dampener and plate and PCB dampener. It has south facing RGB LEDs and also includes screw and stabilizers with three and five pin hot swap compatibility. The chin has a height of 21 millimeters, a default stance, with the back of 31 millimeters and a typing angle of 5.5 degrees. If you were to choose the middle set of legs, you're going to increase your back height to 38 millimeters with a 10 degree typing angle. And with the final set of legs, you're going to have a back height of 44 millimeters and a typing degree of 13 degrees. Fully loaded, this keyboard comes in at 1,170 grams. All right, I got to say, um, I, I have a couple of 1800s and so far I'm very happy with this, how it sounds stock. I definitely want to get in there and modify, but... <laughs> Uh, let's just be real. I just love to do that to keyboard. So anyway, uh, but the stock sound, I'm, I, I think it's gonna, gonna be pretty good. Uh, gonna go ahead and run the sound test now. Hope you guys like it. I'm including a little bit of more technical data. I intend to start doing this a little bit more frequently so that you guys have as much information as possible. But if you have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot them to me in the comments below or over on our budget keeps. You can find me as Bad Mark. Anyway, let's go ahead and do a sound test of this puppy because I'm looking forward to see what it sounds like. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.